Destination Earth, Part 9, Adam and Eve. The blizzard took off from the colony ship and was immediately showered by enemy blaster fire. It took all of Garvey's piloting skills to shake off the first wave of Grey Fighters. Meanwhile, Spin had gone back to Eve to find Jenna. He climbed down the rope ladder and entered the central hub. When he reached the far end of the hall, he found the ground car waiting for him. Spin got in and it zoomed off down the tunnel. It's slowing down. This is Eve's map room. Looks just like the one on Adam. And there's the dais. Now, and if I press the button on the panel here... <laughs> a hologram of Earth. I have to remove the flight recorder and blast it. That one blast should do it. Not so fast. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Give up the flight recorder. And if I give it to you, you'll wipe out the human race. So, what's the difference? Spin! They were waiting for me. Give up the flight recorder or watch her die. Whatever you do, don't give it to them. While Spin was facing off with the Greys holding Jenna hostage, out in the asteroid field, the blizzard engaged the enemy fighters. Garvey flew like a mad woman, narrowly missing the swirling rocks as the ship twisted and turned with breakneck speed. Many of the Grey Fighters couldn't keep up with her. They collided with oncoming asteroids, exploding into fiery death. Ten minutes are up. I'm flying back to Eve. No, no, they need more time. Let's give them another five minutes. We have to destroy the colony ship. My daughter's still on it, and so is Spin. We have no choice, Professor. I'm closing in. Look, the Greys have already boarded. The scout ship has attached itself to Eve's hull. There is still a chance. If Spin and Jenna aren't dead already, they're in the Greys' hands now. I won't let you destroy the ship. There is no time to argue. I'm aiming my missiles. No, you can't. We could have blasted her to smithereens an hour ago, but you wouldn't have it. Now Spin and Jenna pay the price. You're right. It's all my fault. I'm sorry. I'm firing. Now! No! What are you doing? You pushed me! The missiles are off target! One has gone wide and the other exploded on Eve's surface! There is another way that there must be! The exploding missile shook Eve's map room and threw Spin, Jenna and the Greys holding her hostage to the ground. Spin was the first to recover, grabbing his blaster and taking out the Greys. Are you all right, Jenna? Yes. We have to look for the black box. Too late. There are too many of them. Over there. There's a door in one of the pillars. Get in. It's an elevator. Let's just hope wherever it takes us hasn't been overrun by greys yet. Looks like we've reached the bridge. Careful, Jenna. Let me go first. While Spin and Jenna explored the bridge, one of the greys who had entered the map room found the flight recorder on the floor. He took it to the dais pushed it back into its slot and activated it. The hologram of the human homeworld reappeared, revolving slowly around its axis. Above it, glowing letters hung in the air. The greys cheered when they translated the ancient human writing. The red letters spelled out a short message. Destination, Earth. Unaware of what had happened inside the colony ship, the blizzard swooped in for another shot. Locking on missiles. This time, stay where you are, Professor. Look, something is happening. The bulge on Eve's forehead is glowing. Eve has jumped into hyperspace. Oh, great. Well done, Professor. I hope you're proud of yourself. I couldn't let you kill my daughter. Well, what now? All we can do is wait until we get swallowed up in a space-time paradox. We're still here. Yeah, but for how long? Physics says everything that is going to happen has already happened. Did you know that? As far as the laws of science are concerned, the direction of time's arrow is meaningless. If we can somehow locate Earth... How, Professor? You said yourself that the only way to find Earth was with Eve's flight recorder. Eve has gone home. Eve has gone home. Eve has gone home. 
That's what I said. <laughs> hey! Are you mad? Eve has gone her... That's it! I've been such a fool! Garvey, answer me this. Why did we find Eve floating in outer space and Adam on the surface of a planet? I guess Eve must have had a malfunction and broken down. And, and what about Adam? Adam crashed on some planet. Did you see any evidence that Adam crashed? Was the hull damaged? Surely the, the ship would have been ripped to shreds if it had crashed. What are you getting at? Adam didn't crash. Adam landed. Adam went home. What do you mean? Adam completed his mission. He jettisoned all of his colony pods and went home, possibly to, to load up on a second batch of colony pods. You mean Adam went back to Earth? Precisely. That's why the flight recorder was wiped. He completed his journey. The, the recorder was automatically reset for the next flight. A flight which never took place. What are you saying? Aden is Earth. Well, think about it. According to the creation myth, Adam and Eve came from a place called Eden. Eden? Aden? The names are practically identical. Eve broke down during her mission, but Adam returned home. How can you be sure? Well, I'm not. But there is a simple way to find out. Set a course for Aden. As the blizzard jumped into hyperspace, Spin and Jenna were examining the Bridge of Eve, the second colony ship. Banks and banks of monitors, displays and control panels. The technology looks ancient. There is a viewport. Wow, look at that planet. It's so pretty with its rings. Is that Earth? I don't know. I'll try to use the computer to find out. These controls are ancient, but I think I'm getting the hang of them. According to the computer, we're 1.3 billion kilometers away from the sun. That's outside the habitable zone. Earth must be closer. Judging by the size of this sun, about 150 million kilometers, I'd say. Well, that leaves us some time. For what? We're going to take back the ship. As Spin and Jenna formulated a plan to wrest control of the ship back from the Greys, the blizzard arrived at its destination. It fell into orbit around the ice planet Aiden. That's Aiden. I'll perform a scan of nearby space. Eve isn't here. Wouldn't they have arrived before us? Well, Eve's hyperdrive is ancient. She wouldn't be able to jump this close to the gravitational field of the sun. I guess she's somewhere in the outer solar system, if we are correct, and, and this is Earth. I'll keep an eye out. Okay, let me see if I can find out if my theory is correct. I I'm doing a topographical scan of the continental formation below the ice crust. Now, assuming the planet had a considerably higher temperature, I have to factor in the water level of the melted ice. Oh, Garvey, look! The continental formations match! This is it! We are in orbit around the planet Earth! <laughs> <laughs> Easy there. We did it! Long-range scanners are picking up several ships closing in. We have to defend this planet by whatever means necessary. The blizzard alone won't last long against them. You said Eve had weapon systems? Yes. Then it's a safe bet that Adam does too. And what good is that to us? We're going to wake him up. The blizzard entered Aiden's atmosphere, crossed the ice desert, and reached the edge of the glacier that had buried Adam beneath it. Garvey set a ship down on Adam's head. On Eve's bridge, Spin and Jenna were staring at a bank of monitors. Each one showed a different room of the colony ship. Dozens of greys were patrolling her deserted hallways. The greys are all over the ship. We have to get rid of them. Any ideas? Wait, that could work. I'll set the airlocks to manual override. We can open the outer doors and suck the greys into space. I'll activate the PA system. This is the voice of the creator of the universe. You have been chosen as the supreme race of the galaxy. Join me. <laughs> it works! The greys are tumbling out of the airlocks. That was so much fun. Remind me never to get on your bad side. We're slowing down. That planet. Is, is that it? Is that Earth? It must be. It's not what I imagined. Looks like it's covered in ice. 
You won't believe this, but it's Aiden. What? It's definitely Aiden, the planet where we found Adam. A ship has arrived. I can see it. Hello, Mommy. It's the Tehran North, the Grey Mothership. A loading ramp is opening. To releasing some sort of big vessel. That's weird. There's a microwave swarm around the sun. What is a microwave swarm? An energy collection grid. Satellites are positioned around the sun to collect its energy right at the source. See, they're forming a network of beams around the star. They are sending an energy beam to that big vessel that emerged from the mothership. Probably some sort of relay station. It collects the energy beam from the microwave swarm. Look, now the mothership is releasing six more satellites. The relay station is sending the energy beam from the sun to the six satellites. Interesting. They're forming a hexagon of energy. It looks like a window. That's it. It's a window. A window into the past. Aiden's surface is white because of its ice cover, but if you look through the hexagon, the planet is blue. And look, those are the continental formations we saw in the hologram. A time gate. If they shoot their bomb through the gate, it will land in the planet's past and obliterate the entire human race. We've got to stop them. While the time gate opened a window into the past, high in orbit around ancient planet Earth, Anderton had reached the bridge of Adam, the other colony ship. He hooked it up to the Blizzard central computer. The computer is powered up. The weapon systems are intact. I can control them from down here. Can you take off? No. Adam's fuel cells are almost depleted, and I can't extend the solar sails because of the ice cover. What if we hook it up to the fusion drive of the Blizzard? Yes, it's worth a try. I'll patch us in. I've redirected the Blizzard's power to Adam. Is anything happening? Yes. I think we have enough juice to risk a try. Here goes. It's working. We're lifting off. We've left the atmosphere. I'll extend the solar sails. Another angel. Having unfolded his wings, Adam soared around the planet, looking for the grey menace that loomed on its far side. Would our heroes successfully defend the human homeworld? Tune in next time for the final episode of Destination Earth. Destination Earth is written and directed by Patrick McGinley. It stars Jerry Redford, Jet Tattersall, Jemima Knight, and Peter McCallum, and is narrated by Francis Edwards. Music by Silke Matspol. It was recorded at Sydney Sound Brewery by recording engineer John Resk. If you enjoy Destination Earth, please tell your friends about it and like and subscribe in your podcast app of choice. Reviews and comments are very much appreciated. On Twitter, we are at Desti Earth Audio. We are Destination underscore Earth underscore Audio on Instagram, and you can find us on the web at DestinationEarthAudio.com. Thanks for listening. <laughs>